How's it going? It is murderously hot here. Actually, the temperature is just fine, but in the house, it is murderously hot. It is really rather um, awful. That's that's the only word for it. I just I can't handle the heat because I'm Scottish, you know. So I'm gonna aim just about forty-five degrees. There we go. That should be fine. And it didn't explode. That's great. Fire these engines and see how far we get. Are we ready for the awesome? Yeah, so XNEO ended up turning into the software that I used to create my videos about the Asteroid Maps. It's entirely an offline thing. I haven't worked with X Windows in years. I basically don't tend to do anything. I mean, and the technology's changed, so... Yes! A successful separation. Okay, next one. Look, you see that? By putting the separator at the top, they, they will detach in the correct way. Okay, okay, okay. My computer specs, I don't know, they were the fastest Intel processor I could buy at the time, which was a couple of years ago. It's almost two years old, this computer, and it's starting to run rather hot. Yes! Excellent! Okay. Still intact at 30 kilometers. Oh, I thought, I thought that you would didn't expect me to get within 30 kilometers of the sun, rather than you didn't think I would get above 30 kilometers. No, we're not even doing asparagus staging here. Yeah, we're totally doing onion staging because it's a lot easier to maintain. Now we're on to the main sails. Woohoo! Yeah, I was thinking about all the things that have happened in the last 20 years. Like, for example, when Cassini launched, this was before the big supernova survey that provided evidence for the universe's expansion, uh, increasing and speed, accelerating. So, dark energy wasn't a thing back when Cassini launched. So, this is like a completely, you know, <laughs> it's new, legit thing. Just going, got here, visiting the sun. Yeah, we're trying to get as close as possible to the sun. Okay, so now I can actually do time acceleration because we have a lot of stages to go. So this is going four times regular speed. I, I am just drinking tea because my wife was very nice and brought me some tea. Now, I got that decoupler wrong, but the problem is if I take it apart to flip it around again, then what'll happen is is all my things will break. Is it true the moon landings were uh, faked on a sound stage on Io? No, they were faked on Mars, obviously. Uh, there we go. One more burn. Well, there was also the catering cost, Silent Searchlight. Um, you know, that if you were going to fake the moon landing, you would have needed to pay some extra people. Now, here's another one. People have heard about the, the blue flash that is associated with criticality accidents. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? Like, criticality accident is where you're working with masses of uranium, of fissile material, basically. And you're pushing, and they, for various reasons, they have too much in one place, and they start undergoing a nuclear reaction. And frequently, people that are on, like, in the area at the time, they, oh yeah, look, my the temperature drops here, right? So let's let's actually keep it at 100 times. So, um, yeah, people there that are witnesses, they report seeing a blue flash, right? And the thing is, on several occasions, there have also been cameras working, and they don't see the blue flash. So you know why this is? It's because all the radiation, the neutrons, the protons, all the stuff coming off of this uh, nuclear reaction is impinging on the person and it's basically you know giving them horrendous levels of radiation poisoning and uh it hits their eyes and because the things are going so much faster very fast they're going faster than the local speed of light uh, inside the eyeball so they generate chernyankov radiation and that is what people see look oh oh chernyankov radiation in the eye that is what's happening. That's why people see 
blue flashes before they get killed by nuclear radiation. 3,000! 3, 3,000! I think 3,000 is must be about as close as you can get. So anyway, yeah, so in with nuclear reactors, you get the idea there's a, there's subcritical and then there's critical, but there's this interesting region where they are only critical because of the delayed neutrons. Ne delayed neutrons are where you get a fission event occurs and the fission products are still radioactive, but they may not, they're not so radioactive that they immediately split, split out more neutrons. So they sit for a while and then they decay and then you get an extra neutron coming out. And that, if you have those which is about like seven point seven percent or whatever. If you have it sitting in that region, then uh, you can control it at the rate that machines can move, you know, control rods in and out of the reactor. But if you go above that, it becomes prompt critical, and the reaction runs away faster than any system can control it. Yeah. So there's a famous case. Uh, prompt criticality is a it was a army test reactor and it had been shut down for maintenance and when they were bringing it back online they basically had to manually move the control rod out so it would engage with the uh, mechanical control system and the guy pulled it out an inch too far the thing went critical right away prompt critical basically boiled a bunch of steam instantly and that steam pressure then uh, pushed the control rod out like a harpoon, and he ended up harpooning the poor guy through his groin, up through his shoulder, to the ceiling of the reactor room. So, um, yeah, there's a horrible thing that can happen. <laughs> oh my god! McThulhu has it! Shot through the crotch, and you're to blame! You give nukes a bad name! I pulled my rod. <laughs> you played. You... Oh my God! There's a song about that. That is. That is. Yeah. I pulled my rod, <laughs> and it went to flame. <laughs> that is so awful. Oh my God! That is awful. I, it's genius. I love it. Uh, stability control throttle to one hundred percent. F5, place your bets. I'm going to record this as well. Okay, I hit spacebar. It's taking a bit of time. Oh, look at it. It's actually going. <laughs> and it's getting more than one frame per second. More than one frame per second, that is brilliant. Now, here's the question. Is the fuel burn in these things consistent? Because it was, basically they changed the way fuel burns. Okay. Okay, and we do get symmetric burnout on all those stages. And did something explode? No, I think we got a clean separation as well. It's almost like some kind of fighter spaceship with missiles sticking out here or something, you know? Some kind of warcraft. I'm not sure revising it to six-fold symmetry would be safe. I'm not going to try turning this at all. I'm sorry. We're, we're going up. We're going towards the moon. Oh, yes. So when I built my... Well, when I built my massive moon rocket many years ago, it was a lot harder to build everything because the fuel burn systems were different. So the change in the way the fuel burns has really helped. Also, auto struts has made some new stuff possible. Like, the strutting situation is a lot easier now, because I can just click on, uh, you know, strut relative to the heaviest object, and it just works. Yeah, we're easily going maybe four or five frames per second now. It's truly a vast improvement. Okay. That's, that's me getting pretty close. 
Do, 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 do. I'm going to focus view. Okay, and we're going to go right into the middle of that crater. That is excellent. F5. What are we doing now? We're, we're going really fast. To the moon. Yeah, it doesn't matter about getting out. We're not stopping. Uh, wait a second. Did I, f I forget? Oh, shoot. I should have had those engines firing sooner. Might be coming in a little fast now. But I honestly don't know, to be honest. I'm not going to call it dead just yet, because I did it. I thought I was getting pretty close, and these things are higher thrust. We still have... We have more stuff running at higher thrust than we had before. No, last time I started at 1,000, but... I had a lot more stuff running on this single skipper engine, which had lower thrust, whereas these things have much higher thrust, so it might just work out for me. Yeah, we're definitely slowing down fast enough. Still not sure I'm going to be able to get onto the surface and back into space quickly enough, but, you know. Okay, so if I'm decelerating at 1G from 1... Uh, from 1500 meters per second, right? So that's 150 seconds. Oh, I can't do this in my head. I, I need a calculator somewhere. Uh, do, 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 do. Just doing some math to figure out whether I'm going to crash. Oh, yeah, no, I, sh I should do that with 40 kilometers to spare. So I did the math, and this thing is actually going to be fine. In fact, I might throttle down a little. I think the problem is if I burn too early, then it actually brings my impact point up the hill here and makes me more likely to actually crash into something. There is also the possibility that I run out of fuel during this and then end up having to land at the wrong time. I should probably start burning early then for that. Yeah, let's do that. Let's burn early just so I know that I've got enough fuel left in this thing. And we switched to surface attitude. I'm do I'm going in for the thrill or whatever, the kill. Let's slow down a little more. Ah, there we go. I knew that would come. And I can start to see the ground beneath me. So I get about 1G out of that thing. I should make sure I target that. Oh, uh, actually that's fine. Small, biggie smalls debris. Wait, is that... <laughs> that's right. Deidre knows what I'm referencing. So we're not landing. What we're doing is we're bumping. Okay. Oh, something's flying. You can see the shadow. I don't know what that is. But it is not going to be allowed to get in my way of me landing. There, look at it. What is that? Coming down. Okay, and we're going to start going home. Okay, the moon, the earth is, the carbon is there. So that's the way we need, uh, no, this is the way we need to go. Actually, we might be fine just going straight upwards. Now I think about it. Wait a second. Because, uh, wait a second. We are actually going to go slightly backwards. Yeah, let's actually do this way. Because then, if I go straight up, then we're actually deflecting backwards along the orbit, so that might just work for me. <sighs> yep, moon is booped. The moon is booped. The moon, be aware, the moon is booped. Everybody, prepare for moon booping. 
So one thing that I could do to improve this, incidentally, is to get rid of this heavy capsule after I've got into the deep space part, right? And then have like a... I, I'd only need the capsule for launch and then for return I would use something much smaller and lighter so therefore I could get more Delta V out of it. What I want to do is get my time down to under an hour again. Because if you remember, I once was able to travel to curb, uh, the moon and back. Okay, so wait a second. I am going slightly down. I am going slightly down, so I should probably go slightly up, right? Come on. Give me the right angle here. I've, I went and burned too steep. There we go. Okay, 41 minutes. And then I need to bring this down again. Bingo! Okay, F5 that. We're going to do this. And then, of course, now we're going to go retrograde. I think, I can't remember the exact altitude that Apollo had to aim for, but they did have to get a very narrow re-entry. But part of the deal was that they could control it once they hit the atmosphere. Now I get 20 seconds of fuel on this thing. Just going to check. These are activated. These are activated. Radiators radiating. Flux capacitor fluxing. And we are one hour and 20 minutes, so we should be able to get in in just under one and a half hours. Right, that'll be my run time. Means I have a long way to go before I can beat my old record. Okay, here we go. I think at this point, I'm going to start firing my engine just to slow me down as much as possible. Just so that I don't burn up. Well, I maybe will burn up in the end, but this will uh, means I'm burning up as much fuel as possible. Taking the heat off the shield. Taking the heat off the heat shield. But as soon as we touch the atmosphere, we are almost certainly going to have those solar panels explode. And it's going to happen. Okay. Okay. Fuel tank explodes. No, the heat shield. Go, heat shield! Oh, come on! You can do it! Five kilometers per second! Look at the G-forces! Ten Gs! Fifteen! Oh! Oh, oh, oh this is so close! Oh, man! I think we're gonna make it. I think we're gonna make it, though. Whoa! Wow, I am actually sweating. There's no G-force limits as far as I know. <laughs> we're bending the... We, yeah, we're, we're pegging the needle, as we say. Yeah, and again, you know, like, I should have ditched a lot of this ablator, because that would have meant that we would have more mass, more delta V. <sighs> so, optimizations... Optimizations are plenty. I think we might do it in one hour, 25 minutes. But I think this is going to be like Zeno's paradox, that every improvement is going to be harder and harder and harder. I'm actually going to cut my altitude to 750 so that we land sooner. Oh, I think that was a pretty good bet on the altitude change there. If I'd made it 700, I might not have made it to the surface in one piece. One hour, 24 minutes and 50 seconds. Okay, and that is uh, where we have to leave it. Oh yeah, oh yeah.